Hey there, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today we're here to talk about and get hands-on with OpenAI's clip model. So what exactly is the motivation behind OpenAI's clip model? The clip model was trained to understand the semantic similarity between captions and images. And the way this was done was by showing the network 400 million pairs of image and caption pairs and rewarding the network when it makes the prediction of matching those two up correctly. And the implications for this kind of pre training procedure are vast. The ability to understand the semantic similarity of image to text has all sorts of use case implications, some of which we'll dive into today. So one of the examples that OpenAI gives as an example of how you can use clip is for zero shot image classification. This means that you can take a piece of text and an image and you can send these through the network and get a prediction of how likely they are to be similar. This means that you can do classification without doing any prior training on your data set for your custom use case. And this is really monumental because before this was the way that pretty much all classification networks were built was you would have a custom data set, which would represent the sort of things you want to classify. And then you would have images that match up with those and you have to send those through a training procedure and ultimately get your network out at the end. Well, Clip lets you circumvent all of that and just do a zero shot where you show up with the class labels that you want to predict you show up with the images that you want to send through, you send them through and you get a prediction. Of course, there's other use cases as well because now you have a semantic representation of an image, you have a semantic representation of a piece of text. And so you can do things like, you can search an image database with what represents most likely the string of text that you're querying. Um, and so there's all sorts of use cases that you can use for Clip. Today, we're gonna run through in a use case, we're gonna do zero shot image classification live here in this video. So let's dive in. So the task we're giving Clip today is to try to identify the difference between a daisy and a dandelion, just like you and I would. So the way we would do this is we're gonna show Clip 1800 images of daisies and dandelions in this data set. And we're gonna see what test predictions we get back. So this data set, uh, this flowers data set is hosted publicly on RoboFlow. And we have a lot of other data sets up there too if you want to try out different data sets on Clip. So in order to test out Clip, we need to get our data into a Colab notebook where we can run code to make inference with the network. So to do so, um, here you can go ahead and hit download on your data set, and then you'll see a format here, which is the OpenAI Clip structure. So this is a structure of the data set that we need to bring into the notebook to test out Clip. So after that, you'll go ahead and get a link and you'll bring that into the notebook. So this notebook, I'll also link below um, for you to try out Clip with your own Colab notebook. So here um, is an example of using Clip for zero shot classification. So to start off with the notebook, we'll go ahead and download some dependencies. So Clip was released in PyTorch um, and the PyTorch framework is really the best framework and uh, the fact that Clip is implemented in it is, is a nice uh, sign that that is true. So we go ahead and download PyTorch. We'll also clone the repository where Clip lives. So once we've done those things, we can go ahead and download our data set into the clip folder. So this is an example of the link that you'll be getting from RoboFlow to download your clip data into. So you'll see the data are coming down here. We have folders where uh, it's split up into the different uh, splits. So usually you'd have a big training split where you have to train the network to um, kind of recognize your images, but we won't even need that this time. We'll jump straight into the test split. So in the test split, you'll also see this uh, file called tokenization.txt. So this is kind of our first pass at RoboFlow um, of trying out basically a way to make a caption for the images that we're going to test out. So let's take a look at this tokenization.txt. You can see here that we've written an example picture from the flowers classification data set depicting a daisy. So that's something we're kind of auto-generating caption uh, to do the classification with. Um, but you're going to want to try to edit this and try to basically use prompt engineering to create the right classification for Clip to identify your images the best. So this is where you can use um, kind of just basically your own intuition and, and try to uh, maximize Clip's performance based on the language, based on the ontology that you're giving it because Clip has learned from language on how to do classification sort of at the raw semantic level, which is really exciting. So to just start off, let's try it out. Let's go ahead and edit our tokenization file to say daisy and dandelion. And we'll, we'll just kind of go ahead and see how this goes. So after that, um, we kind of read those into a list. And this is the main inference part of the notebook. So basically, we're going to load the model in from Clip. And then we're going to iterate over the images in our test folder 
we're going to send those images through the network along with our tokenizations and see where Clip sends the images into the different tokenizations and see if those match up with the ground truth. And then we'll print out some metrics here on the end about some accuracy. So let's go ahead and run this. So here you can see that the model has started downloading. So this is coming down from OpenAI's Azure Cloud, you know, since they're part of Microsoft now, this is coming down from Azure, um, loading the model into memory, and then it's gonna start doing inferences on all these images. So the again, to review, the uh, tokenization that we tried here was just daisy and dandelion, which are um, sort of like a single word, which is not likely to do so well because image captions uh, typically have uh, a few more, like a, a little bit more uh, length to them. So let's go and see what happens. So here our accuracy on the class Daisy is 0.95 and our accuracy on Dandelion is 0 0.07. So overall we had a 0.44 accuracy. So that's worse than guessing. Um, basically that means that it was always guessing Daisy because it didn't really have many examples of dandelions where dandelion was just the sole word in the caption. So let's try something a little bit more captiony or a little bit more realistic. So here we're trying a picture of a daisy flower or a picture of a dandelion flower. So you can do this where you kind of change your tokenization. Like I said, change the ontology that you're sending into clip. And then uh, we can go ahead and reload those and rerun inference. So this is a process called um, prompt engineering. And this is something that the authors of clip uh, said that you know you might want to do to be able to get better performance on the network. Um, and another thing I'd like to point out here in the code is Clip really can go deeper than just zero shot, shot classification. Here you have image features and you have text features. So these basically can be used for any use case. So you can be identifying the difference uh, in semantic similarity between a list of images, or you could use this to query an image database where you say, you know, I have this piece of text and I want to see which image is most similar to this piece of text. And, um, you know, from there, really, the, the possibilities are endless. So um, I'll leave uh, your imagination up to you for what you can do with Clip. But let's, let's see how this experiment ran. So here we can see we got accuracy on Daisy is 93%. Accuracy on Dandelion is 97%. So that's a 96% accuracy just by doing some prompt engineering to make it be a little bit more realistic with the caption. And I have to say, those numbers are truly inspiring because I've trained custom classification models on this data set. And um, I'll go ahead and link those below in the, the YouTubes if you want uh, real proof. Um, but this network does better than those have just straight out of the box. So this is really an exciting time in AI, both in NLP, both in computer vision. The fact that there's a model like this that can get this good a performance uh, straight out of the box and it's really indicative of how transformer pre-training procedures are going to be creeping into the vision world and really changing the way that computer vision is working. So hope you had a fun time with this video. Go ahead and try out Clip on your own data sets, and we'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Thanks so much.